H2 gas plus I2 gas is in equilibrium with hydrogen iodide gas. Now notice, I didn't say hydroiodic acid. This is a gas. This is not aqueous. When you take hydrogen iodide gas, you bubble it in the water, that's when it dissociates into hydrogen ion and iodide ion. That's when we call it hydroiodic acid. This is just hydrogen iodide. It's not acidic. This won't hurt you. Well, I won't say it won't hurt you, but it won't hurt you as an acid. Okay, so now what happens when H2 gas is added? Well, if H2 gas is added, the system is going to want to move in a direction that actually depletes what I added. It wants to offset it. In order to deplete H2, it has to move to the right. So it's going to shift right. I'm going to use symbols here. Part B, what happens when I2 is removed? Well, if I remove I2, the system is going to want to offset it by producing more I2 that was there. So it's going to want to pull the reaction back this way. So it's going to shift to the left. It's going to produce more reactant. Yes, it'll also produce more of this, but the idea is to produce more of this. C, HI is removed. Well, if I remove hydrogen iodide, the system is going to want to offset by creating more hydrogen iodide. How do you create more iodide? You shift the reaction to the right. You don't do it. The system automatically shifts to the right. I'm sorry, I should be a little bit more precise. You're putting a stress on the system. The system is reacting by moving to the right to offset the stress that you put on it. Part D, argon is added, argon gas. Well, argon is a noble gas. It is inert, so we add an inert gas. Well, if you're adding an inert gas, you're changing the total pressure of the system, but there's not really much that you can do. So in this particular case, nothing is going to happen. No change. OK, C, D, E. And volume is doubled. Well, if we double the volume, it's going to be the same, sort of the same as the argon gas, even though it's, it's inner. A volume is doubled. Um, that means the pressure is decreased, right? Volume is doubled. That means you're making the volume bigger. So you're decreasing the pressure. But you have two moles of particles on the right, and you have two moles of particles on the left. There's no place for the, for the uh, reaction to go to offset the decrease in pressure. It's just going to have a decrease in pressure. So there's no change. OK. Now let's do F. Let's do a temperature increase. The temperature is increased. OK. Oh, I forgot to write. What is the delta H here? The delta H is, formation is 25.9 kilojoules. So this is actually endothermic because we need to know what the delta H is in order to decide what happens when we make a change to temperature. So if this is endothermic, that means that heat is one of the reactants. It is one of the things required to actually move the reaction. If temperature is increased, that means if I increase the concentration of heat, the system is going to want to offset by decreasing the concentration of heat that I put in. So it wants to reduce this. The only way to reduce this, the system must move in this direction. So it'll shift to the right. And there you have it. Le Chatelier's principle. If you have a system at equilibrium and you do something to mess with that equilibrium by either changing the concentration of a reactant or product, by changing the pressure of the system, or by changing the temperature of the system, the system is going to move in the direction, the reaction is going to move in the direction that offsets that change. It's that simple. Okay, thank you for joining us uh, here at educator.com and thank you for joining us for Equilibrium and Chemistry. This concludes our discussion of equilibrium. Next time I see you, we'll be talking about acids and bases. Take good care.